Good evening. Hello, Jennifer and I welcome you, Jennifer Gail Williamson. So we welcome you to Focus on the Word. It's Thursday, the last Thursday in December uh, 2022. And we're not going to be with you long. We just wanted to come on and encourage you to stay focused as we transition from the old to something new. And, um, and, you know, just kind of remind you to focus scripture and give you our, our warmest greetings. Um, uh, it's an amazing thing about new things. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> so, um, you know, God gives us many opportunities for new. So, you know, every, every, um, uh, uh, so many seconds is a minute. Every 60 minutes is a new hour. Um, every 24 hours is a new day. Every seven days is a new week. Uh, the average of 30 days is a new month. And here on, uh, as we knock on the door of December 31st, we'll step out of one year into another. And God said in his word, he said, behold, all old things have passed away. All things are new. And um, and so, you know, you need to change your mindset, your perspective, uh, how you think, how you look at things, because he gives us new opportunities all the time. Each breath that you take is a new breath. Each, uh, every step you make. Mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. Anyway, I don't have the rights to that music. No. You probably don't even know what that music is. I want to cut it off. <laughs> but uh, new things. And you know what uh, I was thinking about? I've been thinking about this off and on all day. Is that uh, there's only one, one person who's always bringing up what's already behind us. Good evening, and that is the enemy, the devil. And, um, you know, oh, that's how he works in our lives, is to always keep us looking at something in the past. And he never reminds you of your successes. Does he, Jennifer? Mm -mm. He always Why brings... Why uh, Right, right. But he always reminds you... Uh, <laughs> he always... Re I'm looking... <laughs> I'm looking at Joyce's text. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he always reminds you of your failures. And he wants you to stay stuck on your failures. But for the past three weeks now, I've been telling you, we're not going into 2023 thinking about what it used to be. Why didn't I? Why shouldn't? Why Why can't I? You know, well, you know. And so the thing is, you got to make that difference. You got to stop looking behind you, and you got to press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And that's what I want to remind you about tonight, that that is your goal, to press forward. And all you have, I said it last week, all you have is right now. Tomorrow's not promised. The next minute is not promised. You just have right now right now and that's why he is the on-time god he didn't tell moses tell the people i was sent you and he didn't say tell tell the people i will be has sent you he said tell them i am has sent you why because he is right now in your present moment right with you taking you through let's pray Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for those that are able to join, be it live or at a later date. I thank you for our technologies that bring us together. And I ask that you make the transmission and the word clear for all the listeners, all the hearers, that their eyes would be open and their ears would be open to what you have to say. Lord, uh, we need you. Um, you are the teacher and we rely on you. So I ask you to lead us and guide us this night and uh, 
and just take us where you want us to go with these, your precious people. I thank you that your word does not return empty, but it will do what you send it out to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So one of the things um, I was thinking about is um, I'm going to share one thought with you and then I'm going to ask Jennifer to read out of Philippians. We're going to end, uh, I'm going to share a thought and we're going to read the focus scripture and we're going to tell you Happy New Year. So uh, one of the thoughts I I was thinking about today is uh, the enemy always keeps us in the past and he's always reminding us of the past. And, uh, but God has always taken us forward into the plans. I know the thoughts I have towards you. And I told you the, uh, the, uh, purpose comes before the plan. And so he has a purpose and you are fitting in the plan. So my thought I was thinking about is something that my brother would always say. And, um, my brother Carl, uh, before he passed away, he lived with us, uh, hit the last almost two years of his life. He was diagnosed with, um, prostate cancer. So he had a, um, he had a really large tumor and it was blocking his ability to empty out his bladder and some, you know, y yucky things happen with, uh, and I'm up here patting my foot, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep them feet sti still. So he, uh, he had, um, he had a, a number of health challenges and in the, that course of the last two years, he came to live with Jennifer, Jennifer and I. We were all in the same household, my brother Carl. And, um, he was, uh, the provider for his family, his wife and his son. And so when, when the floor, when everything emptied out for him, that ain't me that time, then he, um, he needed, uh, uh, somewhere for him and his wife to, uh, you know, to live. So they lived with us and we were all just kind of packed in and, you know, living together. And in the course of that time, you know, uh, he shared many whiz thoughts of wisdom, didn't he, Jen? Mm. He had more, he had so many nuggets and he wasn't, he was close to God then he drifted away, but then he came back. You know, whenever you come back, God has that spot for you. He puts you right back where you where you left off. <coughs> My brother said, a liar is worse than a murderer. He said a liar is if is wor is a liar is worse than them all. And you know, he said, think about it. If you lie, You'll steal. You'll steal, you'll kill. You'll kill. If you lie, you'll kill. If you lie, you'll uh, covet somebody, what somebody else has. All those things that the Ten Commandments tell us not to do. <clears throat> so in the stuff that we hear in the news, there's a person recently elected who embellished his resume and all of that. Uh, and I thought about it. When you lie, you're stealing uh, from someone who's put their faith in you. You're robbing the trust. You're you're treading their trust on the. You're murdering their hopes and their dreams. And you know what? We as Christians, we got to stand up for what's right. And if you stay silent to things then your silence is agreement. And you know what? We can't always be silent and say, well, you know, uh, them people are over there because you know whatever's over there will come over here. You know, a few years ago in 2019, you know, I kind of laughed at COVID. You know, oh, that's in China. As long as it stays over there, I said, right? And it did not stay over there. And so, you know what? Stand up for what is the right thing. And and uh, there's a commercial these days that says, you know, when you speak out on on um, uh, semitisms, uh, then, you know, 
when you speak out about one group, you help them all. And so it's just a time for us to to say, uh, sp stand up for what's right and don't be fooled by a lie. Whatever it's called, it's a lie. Yeah, I'm about to say, and don't be ignorant with the world. You know, that's the thing about it is ignorance. Um, the world is ignorant. Sin is ignorant. So when we give into ignorance, we, we're ignorant ourselves. So it's just like how it's easily what mom said was, oh, that China stuff, but didn't even think about what's coming off our mouth. That's ignorance. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. So it's just, you know, be careful not to be ignorant, but always be wise. Proverbs. <laughs> I was going to say my Proverbs. Proverbs, Jenny. Yeah. Proverbs. So yes. Roberts always talked about a foolish man, ignorance, and a wise man. You will always want to be wise. Yeah. You know, God always say, you know, people perish for the lack of knowledge. It's still wisdom. Don't be ignorant. And don't try to argue with the fool. It The proverb says the fool, when you get in an argument with a fool, they make you into the fool. Yeah. So, you know, that's not the way. Our weapons are not carnal. Yeah. We don't fight the way the world fights. But you got to you gotta uh, ask God how you should respond to various things and various things you see. Uh, and then there was one more thing uh, about a lie. And that is, uh, before COVID, Jennifer had this very, very vivid dream. Mm. <laughs> and she may not um, be in a place to talk about all of it now. But what the Lord was showing me today is the lie opens the door to deception. And lies give deception a footing. And so in her vivid dream, uh, she, she, uh, very vivid, very detailed, but it was about deception and how the world was being fooled in some things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, in the, the Bible says in these days, even the very elect would be deceived. So don't be deceived. All right. It's time to focus because we're going to leave 2022. With our face set on God. And I want to remind you of the focus scriptures. Remember, focus is what God did to set my mind free. How he brought me out. Philippians chapter 3, yeah. verses 13 and 14, I think it is. Or 12 and 13, something like that. Always start somewhere. I know. <laughs> right, She's going to pick a place for us to start. And then we'll go over to Philippians four. chapter 4. So we're going to Start in Philippians chapter 3. And 4 is what? 4 through? 4 through 9. Yeah. I so so. so uh, in Philippians, I love Philippians. You know, Philippians is a, one of those books that, uh, like many of the books in the New Testament that Paul wrote, a lot of times he was uh, he was writing to bring correction. But when he wrote Philippians, he, it was a love letter. He was thanking them. They sent a gift to, um, <laughs> oh, yay, yay, you made it. <laughs> he said, uh, they sent the gift. Paul was in jail in Rome and they sent him a gift and he received the gift and he opened it up. All of, most of Paul's letters, he opens it up with what we call the salutation. Now, when you was in school, you learned how to write a letter. You know, you put the inside address and then you put the date and then you said, dear so-and-so. And there was an opening paragraph. So his letters begin with the salutation. He, he defines who he is and he says, uh, I, Paul, you know, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes he said, but he, to the people of, and then he greets them first before he gets into the meat of everything. So he, it was like a thank you letter. He received their gift and he was calling the thank, uh, calling. He was writing. <laughs> Hey, Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? 
It's God just like, oh, it's a revelation <laughs> that we're going to have internet. Oh. You don't know what it is. I'm doing this voice message. <laughs> or like, uh, like uh, Marty said in Back to the Future, your children are going to love it. You right. know? Well, please, like, Hi, this is visual voicemail. Yeah, right. Bible, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So don't say that Sister Gail is preaching, <laughs> is teaching false doctrine. Right. No, he yeah. did not call. He wrote them and he thanked them for the gift. I received the gift. I thank you. You know, and then you know. Now you know it was slower than Southwest for him to get the gift. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you may never get home. You may never get that word. You fly in Southwest. You may never. Get you your luggage. Word. You may not you ever get it. You may <laughs> never get that blessing. It'll be cancellation for days. <laughs> I'm sorry, little humor. We still sorry. waiting. We we still waiting. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, pray for me. Pray for me, okay? <laughs> oh Jesus. Let me get let me get back into the heavenly place realm. <laughs> so he was writing to thank them. He was also writing to say, you know, because it took a while for the gift to the the person bringing it had to travel. And so he was writing to say I received it and the person that bought it is well he got sick on the way he's this you know so he was updating him just like when we used to write letters back in the day this is what's going on how are you and so Paul was giving encouragement and he was talking about you know just what it means uh and, and back in and so when we go over to Philippi, Philippians chapter 3 he starts encouraging them. He's telling them about, you know, what it takes to 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 survive. So, uh, Jennifer, you're in chapter three. Yeah. And where do you want to start? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still chuckled. <laughs> I am. <laughs> that that was a little funny. <laughs> About that. that was a good one. That yeah. was good, Mom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, She'll be here all week. Right. 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 I don't know. Because um, we always start somewhere like uh, eight. You always go backwards. Yeah. I don't remember that. What does three verse one say? Okay, you pulling all the way back. I know. <laughs> Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. Mutilators. Right. You got to cut up your flesh in order to be saved. Jesus Christ already muted, let them mutilate his, his flesh mm -hmm. so that you and I could be saved. Keep going. Three, for we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what God or Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort, though I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could. So he said... He said, watch out. He's encouraging. He's closing the letter out. And he wants to close it by encouraging them. Watch out for this. Watch out. And don't put confidence in your ability. We're going to leave 2022. And it's not your ability. It's your obedience. It's your faith. It's your love towards God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's those that are called obey his voice. So don't put confidence on what, in what you can do yourself because without God, you can't do anything. Go ahead, Jen. He said, but if anybody can have confidence, he said, I can have confidence. Right, Jen? Right. Indeed, if others have, no, have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. Right. Five, I was circumcised when I was eight years old. I am pure blood citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. 
I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. See, if you get, you can get so zealous that you can wrongly persecute others in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going, Jenny. Oh, we can, preach oh, we can mm -hmm. stop right we there. Stop we could hold. Yes. <laughs> but, yes. Um, um, as for righteousness, I obeyed the laws without thought. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Eight. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. All pales compared to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through the faith through faith in Christ. For God has way for for a what is that? Sorry. For God's way of making us right with Himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power of that raised Him from the dead. I want to suffer with Him, sharing in His death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection re resurrection from the dead. One way or another, he wants to know him in the power of his might, the power that raised him. But my friends, I said it before and I always said, you can't know the power that raised him from the dead without without partaking of suffering. They go hand in hand. The fellowship of the there's a fellowship, there's a bonding that comes together when we suffer together, when we suffer for his sake. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, 12. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I press on. To reach that perfection. See, perfection grabbed you. And then he's pressing on to reach to reach that, that perfection. Jennifer, keep talking. Are you in 13? Yes. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive heavenly the heavenly prize. For which God through Christ Jesus is, Jesus is calling us. So as we leave 2022, we're going to forget the past this year. So much has happened. And you know, uh, there's a funny thing that happens at the end of the year. There's a summary of different things the, that you'll see on the news and different places. They'll summarize the people that died during the year. And people from the beginning of the year, you almost forget, you know, those, those, uh, those people in uh in the news or or famous people you go oh yeah that person did pass this year right and so we at some point have to forget what's behind we take our loved ones with when the death is close to you you'll never forget you'll always remember but you know what you take them and they're your legacy they're woven into the fabric of your being and god wants you to press towards the mark. He said, forgetting. Remember, we're approaching December 31st. We're going to step out of this and it doesn't matter what, what you could have or should have or why didn't you. You didn't. And you only live in the now. N-O-W. The next minute is not even promised. So what faith are you going to use right now? Oh my God. I hope you hear this. I hope you, you catch this. I am fishing. I'm throwing it out to you. See, the, the bait is there right now. Yeah. But I know what the, uh, uh, the, I know what the bill says. I know what, what you got in the mail. I know what the doctor says. I know how you feel. But where's your faith right now? Right this moment. Can you trust God this moment? Can you believe him right now that he, the, the next breath you take, he'll provide it? Can you trust God? Can you? What are you going to do with now? Not tomorrow, not the next minute. And I'm not even asking you to consider what you should have said five hours ago. 
But where are you now? And what's your choice? Right now is where you have a choice. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So what she said about the devil and everything. But I also want to add on 15 and 16 to this. Thing. Yes, please do. Because I wanted you to. I, I am. Can I say this? But um, we, yeah, forget what happened last year and everything. But what the devil likes to do is forget about the progress that we have already made. So we should, we, we, we focus so much on shoulda, coulda, wouldas that we forgot about the progress that we have already made. So 15 and 16 said, let who are all spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on, on some point, I believe God will make it plain for you. So he'll make it, write it down, make it plain. So every plan that you have made, everything that you, you know, you're mature, you, you believe he's going to make, if you have a struggle, he's going to make it plain for you. But he said, but we must hold on to the progress we have already made. See, everybody will always say, oh, oh, but they don't look, the little victories are still victories. The little ones, the little tiniest victories, everybody's looking there for that grand big old kabam. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, that's one. But for, you forgot about the, huh, I made that payment on time. Oh, I'm, I made it to the next day. Oh, I, yeah. it's, it's everything was, it's still a progress. We yeah. still progress. Yes. And if you made it this far and you want to see that, if you make it to next year, you still have a little small victory. You've got to thank God for that. It's that's the, where four comes in. The little four. victories are what bring you into, you know, uh, uh, you may have noticed that I've been losing weight. And uh, yeah, and I've, I gave her her weight. Oh, she's so kind, <laughs> such a good daughter. She said, "Mother, said, let me mom. take it for you. Let me load. carry your load." And I'll I said, "Sure, Jen." No, I said, "No, you don't want this load, baby." No, I don't. No, I, no. I don't want that. But but I've been making this little these little progresses, and at first I was the only one that could tell it. I could tell it, you know, in the way I felt mm -hmm. and the way some things felt. Uh, uh, felt on me and uh, just this week I've been having uh, I, I only went to work two days this week but one of my uh, uh, co-workers said you've been losing a lot of yeah. weight I see it on you and it's like all of a sudden see by the time you can see it those are victories that led up to what you can see faith comes by hearing faith comes by and faith without works is dead so when i right now made a decision then you gotta right now make a decision and put it your faith to work and 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 then faith is the evidence of things hoped for what's hoped for will become seen mm -hmm. okay Keep going, Jennifer. And like Jennifer said, all of this in Philippians chapter 3 leads Those us up to four. It says you got to hold on. So as we forgetting and we putting things to down, we don't also remember, yeah, this year may have been hard for everybody. This year may have been a, amazing for some people. Some people got a breakthrough. Some people got promotion. Some people had setbacks. But if we made it through, we're still breathing and living. We still have a purpose. And, you know, to next year, it's like, you know what, God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my, for what didn't happen. And I'm thankful for what happened. Because some mm -hmm. things that didn't happen probably was him closing the door. And some things that happened was him opening doors. Amen. Some things was by our, our own decisions that may have made a detour. Yes. Like, yes. okay, God, I may have made a detour, but I thank you for bringing me back to the right path. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where chapter four is going to come in because it's all about being thankful and then sealing these things and going towards next year. Because it's like you got to have a different mindset. Because last year, that for what was last year, is last year's mindset. Was this year, God got something different. And he's like, I got, I, I need you to have a different mindset. I need you to have open eye, a, a, a fresh pair of eyes and fresh ears. I need you to hear. And be willing 
to accept the change that God wants to bring you yeah. to, into because you cannot stay the same. No. He is taking us to new places and you got to be open to be taken to the new place. Just go on over to verse 1, chapter I, I, 4. I was about to say, just look at Genesis because look at the people of Israel. They had to go over. They couldn't move. You got to, in order to change, you got to say yes. Some things you got to say yes to. Some things you got to say, I can't do no more. I can't do this no more. And it's like with the people of Israel, if they complained so much that that generation's had to die. They yes. couldn't go into the blessings. And no. it's like, we got to be careful yeah. to, you know what, God? I don't want to be stubborn. I don't want to be stagnant. I just want what you got for me. Yeah. And, okay. and Moses said, if you don't go with us, I'm not going to go. No. Don't you go without God. No. Don't you go in, in, it's impossible to in walk 2023. This it's impossible to walk this walk without our Lord. It's impossible. We try to do it. Like, all right, God, I'm just going to walk ahead of you. And he's like, hm, you ain't going to get that You'll be far. back, yeah. He gonna yeah. be like, the first ditch you fall into, you're going to be like, hell, he gonna be like, I thought you could do it. Our little dog, he walks behind us, right? When you get up and you move, oh, he walks behind you. And, but if you got something and you kind of drop it his way, he darts and he darts and he'll run up close to you too, right? Yeah, that's what we are. Okay, Jen. Okay, so you want me to I'll go all the way to one? Yeah, just start in verse one. If I don't know some of these names, don't judge me. Thank you. Oh. Um, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends. For you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Hey, Paul deep, bro. Paul is deep. And this is his closing of his letter. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Now I appeal to e Edoa and that other dude. Yeah. Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. I ask and I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they work hard with me in telling others the good news. They work along the Clement and the rest of my workers, who my co-workers who named, whose names are written in the book of life. Yeah. For always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. I say it again. So these people, and, and maybe at another date, we'll look up and talk about yeah. what was the disagreement that they had and what was going on. But they were all in the Lord. Paul mm -hmm. said that. Yeah. He said that. And so... That shows us that even as Christians, we may not always see eye to eye. Yeah. Yeah. And we may not always be, you know, uh, you know, holding hands through the and, and <laughs> happy, you know. <laughs> and some people are not quite your favorite, but that's all right. right. You know, there's a way to live and move with them. And so he then says in verse four, he says, uh, it's, it says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I love that. But this one says always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Five. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Oh, my God. I cannot say this enough. Let everyone see that you are considerate. Go ahead, Jeff. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Because he's coming soon. He's going to be here. You don't want him to walk up on you and you're not in a considerate mood. Okay, you put your foot out. It's like this. Oh, hallelujah. Put your foot out. Right. Go, oh, did I do that? Like, you know? I saw you fall. Like, right. And you know. <laughs> You know how a kid gets caught doing something? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, we don't want to be caught doing something. No. Yeah. No. Six, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Don't, you know, up your thankfulness. Increase it. We talked about that before. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Eight. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, 
everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. um, one thing the translation she's reading says, fix your thoughts. And the fact that it says, fix your thoughts, l lets you know that every thought is not yours. And so you, everything that it doesn't initiate with you, you're being fed thoughts. Some of it just comes from your own, uh, from the flesh. Some of it come, some of it comes from emotions. Some of it comes, but wherever it, it, it's, it's driven, but it's not spirit filled. And he said, you, no matter what is going on, you got to turn, you got to fix. It's almost like literally turning yourself towards what is good and lovely and of good report and praiseworthy. Think about those things. Fix on those things, which is a constant thing that you, you can't say, uh, you don't get up and say, I took a bath last week, so I don't need to bathe no more the rest of my life. What? Right? Okay, you need to or I brush, I brushed my teeth two years ago, so I don't need to brush my teeth ever again. No, no, that is not the case. See, you, why do you do certain things on a regular basis? You do it to take care of what you, of yourself. So when you fix your thoughts, you are taking care of your thought. I know, I know how to get to Jennifer. She's, she can't even move beyond that. She's like, like she's stuck on that. She's stuck on <laughs> my child. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm okay. Okay. It was just, you know, I was making it plain. I was getting your attention. It's not Okay, 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 all right. All right so, but that's how important it is to fix your thoughts. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with right now? What are you going to fix your thoughts on right now? And you know what? That's funny that you say that because we make that what we do physical, like you say, brush your teeth and all that stuff. You want to make it into a routine. A constant, a consistent basis for you. Make it a routine. Make it a routine every morning. See, that's what we're talking about when it's like, make sure you have time with God. You fix your mind on God. You fix on, if you, when you wake up, when you go to bed, you fix your mind on Him. You make it a routine. It's a, when it becomes a constant routine, it's easy to praise. It's easy to give thanks. It's easy to, uh, just to, Turn your mind, I guess, to refocus your mind back on what is good. Yeah. You know, it, will it be a battle? Yeah, because w the more you make it a routine, the devil likes to throw a monkey wrench in a routine. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. You know. But when you get into a routine, and that's exactly where I was going to go with that, I see Rosita posted, mm -hmm. is uh, what Romans 12 says, renew your mind daily. daily. Dale, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. R Romans 12 and 1 and 2. And it says, renew your mind. Fix your thoughts. Do it daily. You don't just uh, go to the bathroom once in your life, bathe once in your life, brush your teeth once in your life. Come on. You take care of things on a regular basis. Stop, Jennifer. Come on. It's just... A, oh, okay, no. I'm done. I'm okay. done. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Okay. So, what, you know, and if you don't take care of those bodily things, they stink. And if you don't take care of your thought mm -hmm. process... It stinks. And it becomes unhealthy. Because even with the body, you start developing things. Your thoughts start developing things. And then if your thought, your mind is connected to your heart. Your heart is connected to your mouth. So instead of praises coming out, what end up coming out is foul things. I curse you. The, James also said blessing and curses come out of this mouth. So you can cut somebody. And you can bless somebody. Bless. You could be in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and then you F you so and so. Like, what? That doesn't say forgive you so and so. What did you say? But, you know, you instead of saying forgiving, you're saying F this person, man. When I see them, I'm going to be like this. Oh. Man, I ain't giving the money to the church because, look, I paid all every. Like, that, I'm sorry. That I got into that. Yeah, you did. You, but you, it's she like, went deep. But, but, <laughs> 
But it's the truth though, because that's how people, if they're, if they're stinking thinking. Yeah, exactly. And when it stinks and it, and it smells and it comes out, it doesn't matter how cute you look on the outside and how, how much you are on, on each, everything on somebody's board or everything else. It doesn't matter because when you're, when you're toxic and you're foul, it comes out. From the inside out, it's going to spread out. Yeah. And and, it's, and the bad thing is, God will give you a chance to clean it up before you fuck up the whole place. And if you don't clean it up, he'll judge you. Okay, and you don't want to be judged. No. Mm -mm. No. What verse are you at? I don't know. That was the end of that. No, that's not the end. No, It's keep... not the end of it. So you want me to read all the four? You I think so. That. I'm sorry. You sure? Yeah. Well, what's after nine? Uh, is Paul thankful for their gifts? And I guess, I don't know. What's verse 10? Okay, you just want to read it. Um, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I ever was ever in need, for I had learned how to be content whatever I had. How did he learn to be content? He fixed his mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 12. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with, pl with plenty or little. 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. Mm -hmm. And remember, he was in jail. So that's right. his present difficulty. Right. Um, as you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I was brought through brought you when I first brought you the good news and then traveled from on from Macedonia. Mm -hmm. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonia, you sent help more than once. Mm -hmm. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. Eighteen. At the moment, I have all that I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with. Yeah. They are sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who take, takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. Read that last verse you just read. And this same. 19. Mm -hmm. And this same God mm -hmm. who takes care of me will supply all your needs. From his glorious riches, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now all glory to God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 My dear friends, he learned how he. it was a love letter. It wasn't correcting. Yeah. He was encouraging them. He thanked them. Uh, and he said, you know, I've noticed everything that you've done for me. And... And even right now, and and I have everything I need. And he said, I've learned how to have a lot and a little. And But he said, I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who, who, strengthens gives, who strengthens me. And then this same God will take care of your needs according to his great riches and glory through Christ Jesus. My God, this is where we are. This is our right now. And we're going to go into 2023 with the anticipation. You know, even a pregnant woman, um, most pregnant women know they're pregnant. Occasionally you hear about someone who said, I didn't even know I was pregnant. Right. Yeah. But but but, you know, to expect you're awaiting something to occur. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel, the anticipation. That's the right word. Mm -hmm. I feel the anticipation, the expectation. There used to be that commercial with the ketchup coming. And, you know, and it was slowly. And I think the song was playing anticipation, you know. And, uh, that you know, they were just trying to highlight that this ketchup was thicker than the others. And it didn't just run out, but it was worth the anticipation. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know, I'm in a place of anticipation. I'm in, embarking on new things. There is a whole new world, to quote Ariel, 
opening up in front of me on that, Jasmine. That, that was, that was Jasmine. Jasmine. Okay. <laughs> right. I know you're Jasmine. <laughs> you know, right. And so anticipation, it is worth the wait. And while you're waiting, you're supposed to do something. While you're waiting, don't just sit there and go, wait, God, wait, how long, God, how long? No. He said, write the vision down and Prep make it yourself. plain. Prep yourself for the change. Because just like, you know, our great, I'm going a, I'm to a go with our great, my, our great leader, my sister, my sister Fred, my lady, my girl, Miss Maria, you know, she has a vision board. And you know that when I look at that, it's prepping what you want. Write down what you want. When what you want to see, map. You know you can't map out what God does, but you can definitely start on embarking on what you want to see. Prep for the change. Prep to be the change. Prep yourself for what God said. Are right, you ready? Right. Because <laughs> you won't even know when it comes if you're not prepped. Mm. And you know what else? Um, the it's scriptural what she does. Because Habakkuk asked a question, and the answer was to write the vision down and make it plain. And the, the answer was, they that read it shall, shall run, run with, with it. it. And though, though it tarries, it shall surely come to pass. It sounds like that's a contradiction. Like, well, it's... I'm waiting, I'm writing, it's Terry. Where is Terry? Terry means de delay, but to tarry means there is an appointed time. There's an expected time. And you, as you read the vision, as you see the vision, it strengthens you to walk in the direction of the vision. Because where your focus is, is what you're going to walk mm -hmm. towards. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Where your focus is, that whatever captures your attention, what draws you in, you a it is not enough to write the vision and put it underneath something in a drawer and close it up. The vision is to be read. The vision is to be on display because every time your eye catches it, you will walk towards the vision. And though it's not here yet, it will surely come to pass. That's right. It will surely happen and you will walk in the flow. You'll walk in the, and you'll fulfill the purpose. Mm -hmm. You'll fulfill the purpose. Mm -hmm. So my friends, be on the listen out. I don't know, Miss Maria, what you might have planned, but if there's a yeah. vision board. She do. She said hosting a visual board, a virtual board event. Monday, January 2nd, write the vision. Oh, January 2nd, this Monday. I guess I better hop on, huh? Huh? I can't just say it. I can't just talk about it and not do it. So you see that? Reach out to to uh, to uh Maria if you need more details, you know. Uh, but a virtual visual, vision board, make it plain so that they can... Who read it? Who see it? Who's going to read it? Who's going to see it? You are. I am. You're going to see your own board. Mm -hmm. Right? So come on. Let's get on it because I'm tired of wasting time. Time is, it's, and really for real, time ain't on our side. So whatever you want to do, you better do it now. Right. So that means if we feel the fire, get up. Unless you're going to get, you waiting to get burned. You know, uh, <laughs> so, Fine, yeah. do, do, do. Uh, we don't have the rights to that song either. We don't. Sorry, no, Anthony, we don't. You know, we don't have. We don't have the rights to that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna kind of close on this. Many years ago, I've been in different dark spots in my life, and there were times that I attempted suicide. Yeah, and. In those times, one time in particular, I felt despair and I felt like, why am I even alive? Nobody cares, blah, blah, blah. There were a number of things going on and that was in my previous marriage. And I tried to cut at my wrist and I thought, you know, I'll just... I'll just cut myself and let myself go like that. 
So I, I started slicing y'all. And let me tell you something. I started slicing at my wrist. Now I didn't have a razor. I guess if I was serious, I would have did something that would just take a whoop, right? But when you feel the fire, you suddenly realize, you know what? I don't think, I don't think I want to die today. <laughs> no, that's, I ain't no dying today. <laughs> I thank God that he knows what, uh, how to get our attention. And so, you know, you can say a whole, that you can, uh, the devil will blow all that stuff at you. And I didn't have the spiritual anything to connect with. And so he took my thoughts and he took me anywhere he wanted to go. But you know what? When you feel the heat and you start feeling the heat of the consequences, your, your decisions can take a change. Mm -hmm. And I want to in, in, uh, encourage you, take a change and, and do it while you can. The time is short. And I told you last week, I'm not going to the grave with my purpose unfulfilled. Hello. I'm not taking unfulfilled purposes or plans. Everything that God wants me to do, I intend to do it. And I'm going to start with the vision that I need to write down. So are you ready? You're going to do it with us? We doing it, Jennifer? Let's do it. Let's do it. You going to do it? Let's go. <laughs> I am glad to, and God in his infinite wisdom, yes, uh, my God, he had a plan for my life. And he said, no, dying is not today, girl. I got a plan for your life. And on several occasions, you know, there's more. Jennifer knows about some of them. Some of them, I don't think uh, Karen knows about all of them or, or my other daughter, Kim. But I've told Jen for some of it. And oh, my God. I'm so happy to be alive today. And you know what? Anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I can look in the face of those in despair and those that suicide is taken. And I can say, oh, no, you can't have this one in the name of Jesus. In fact, let me say that to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree in your life that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I come against every moment of despair. I come against those thoughts that would weigh you down and, and say that you're not good enough. I come against that hopelessness that maybe you feel in your home, in your family, in your job, at, maybe in your marriage, whatever it is, I come against it now and I tell you, Fear, I tell you depression, I tell you darkness, you have no authority over my friends in the name of Jesus, and that at the sound of the trumpet, you too, every work of the enemy, every every foul and evil spirit, you will bow down and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So no matter what you try to do to my friends, I know you're out come and I know who I serve and you too are under his feet suicide helplessness despair oh you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of 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 all and so now my friend I declare and decree to you the freedom to really walk around, the freedom to move and ha live and to have your being and to fulfill your plan in God as you fix your mind on him, as you renew your mind with him, he will is sure and faithful to guide you and lead you into his perfect plan in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that every moment that tries to take you back has no more authority over you in Jesus' name. Yes. For you are in right now. And the I am God who is right now with you says, I go before you and make a crooked way straight in the name of Jesus. So rise up and be free, my friends. Rise up and refuse to give in and to bow down, knowing that the one, that the life that you now live, you live because of Jesus Christ, who was crucified and gave himself for you. Yes. 
gave himself for you. Walk in the freedom, the liberty that has been set before you. Be determined to walk into this in 2023. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. The name above all names. See, there's a sound uh, that's going to be declared. And everything above the earth, on the earth, and yeah. under the earth will have to declare Jesus Christ is the Lord. Every demon, every devil, every principality, every disease, every high thought, everything that's exalted itself in high places, every debt, oh, everything that has weighed you down, that will declare Jesus Christ is the Lord. Remind it, remind that enemy that you know its outcome in Jesus name, mm -hmm. in Jesus name. Jennifer and I love you. I wasn't going to stay here a whole hour. Look at us, Jen. I know, right? I know. Like us. I know. I was just going to say, you know, I was just going to say, do this, do that. You know, come on. Bye. You know. Right. <laughs> Focus. Uh-huh. 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 Right. Set, your, set your thoughts. <laughs> Oh, yes, we do love you. I, I yes. love you so much. Yeah, I, you a know. A bunch of hearts. A bunch of hearts. Uh, we love you. Uh, you know, I love, and it's easy to love because he loves us. Yes. He loved me. He loved me enough to pull me out that despair. Mm -hmm. He loved me enough when, when suicide said, well, why are you staying? Nobody's going to miss you. And you know what suicide does? It robs your family. Yeah. Your family are left with this big hole and they're left the the people around you, the people who know you, they're left they're left holding this this whole guilt trip. You know, you're gone on, but they're holding all of this wondering and the devil works on your family. He works on the family of those who have taken their lives. He he torments them with why did you should have recognized you should have this it. Oh, the torment right. that the families and go through. Like maybe you did it. You were the cause. Oh, it's yeah. It's all your fault. And it's you, you and you and you and and then you could have done better. You wish you could have done. But that's that's the enemy yeah. trying to get in. And that's the enemy trying. And it's a self a selfish to think that you have no outcome but to do this. And it, it you thought nothing about anybody around you. Now, I'm not, you know, someone who counsels or any, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I just want you to know, my friend, I've been troubled with it. And through the power of Jesus Christ, I've been made free. Yeah. Um, now, will it try to uh, real? it's ugly? Yeah. yeah. It always it's, does. It's always trying to make you like, oh, here comes, here comes a thought. But yeah. it's like, okay, what what is the tools that you've been instilled into you that you have to... And then there's so many in the world who don't have those tools that we have as Christians. You have a toolbox. Mm -hmm. And in your toolbox, these are not uh, carnal weapons, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. And through this toolbox, you just pick up the right tool for the right season. And if you don't know the tools, then you'll use the wrong thing for the wrong job. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. The mind is the battlefield. Yeah, it really talk, is. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Uh, before I get off the line, I just want to remind you that um, starting January the 10th, I'm going to be on the second and the fourth Thursday um teaching in the church mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start with the um, book of John and uh, uh, if you've been with me before you know we went through the book of John we took a long time I'm not planning on taking that long but I'm not going to skim on it either mm -hmm. I still plan on doing uh, Thursday night but it's going to be a different topic so I'm not going to teach the book of John and I'm going to be we don't know. Yeah, I may call it something different. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jennifer, you want to say anything? Happy New Year. Oh! Happy New Year. Happy and what, New Year. And whatever, whatever happened last year is last year. 
and celebrate. And the even small, this year. And even this year coming up. But you know what? Celebrate the small victories and praise God for the, for the bad and the good. And if you're still here, even to make it, if God shall tarry next year and you make it to 2024, remember to thank him in everything you do. In everything because you do. Because life is precious. And we don't have, we don't have much time here. Mm -mm. And, you know, even in our bodies, if like I said, God shall tarry, like before you know it, you know, it's people dying every day. People we grew up with, people you, you know, parents, grandparents, like generations are dying. Yeah. So just yeah. Yeah. happy new year. Be thankful and be happy safe new. out there. Be safe, be careful, and have a happy new year. Leave what's behind. And go into the new year. Join us. We're going to join, join that virtual vision board. And come on. Let's let's get our vision together. Yeah. And then in maybe three, four, six months, we're going to we're going to have some praise reports about what God, how God is bringing the vision into focus. Okay. How he he will clear up and sharpen that image. Yep. Okay, uh -huh. shopping image. Yeah. Ooh, we love you. We you love be you. Better the Southwest, right on time. Right on ah, time. We yeah. can get you to your destination with your luggage. <laughs> you will be home on time, and you free to move around the cabin. Okay. You want to get away? Okay. <laughs> Everybody on the free. Right. Right. And you know what? You don't have to get in the A, B, or C line. Okay. <laughs> well, first class. First class. Okay, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Come on, y'all. Come we on. Come on. We love Bye. you. Bye, y'all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> bye, bye.